I recently flew back from a meeting in San Diego to Dallas Fort Worth Airport. On the night, they had three or four tornadoes. And as we were landing, the pilot said, you know, really buckle up, everybody sit down, strap in, we're gonna have a rough landing. Fear is what I'm gonna open today's show with. A little understanding, are you afraid of spiders? Are you afraid of snakes? When I saw a cell phone come over the person in front of me and land on my lap, I was fearful, okay, during that flight. Dr. John Trowbridge is gonna be here to talk about diabetes and mold and mildew and fungus. Okay, CT scans for children, are they okay? Nurse Jenny Herbacek talks about their link to cancer. And then Frank Jordan is gonna be here talking about caprylic acid, what is that? And why does it help so many people with fungal conditions? Stay tuned, a lot to come. This show is brought to you by the NSC Company. When you can't, Beta Glue can. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Folks, when we started this show 17 years ago, it's hard to believe, my wife and I had a plan for three years because really the people around us who were talking with us about doing a show were saying, what's the show going to be about? Fungus. Fungus and the poisons they make. You might have three months on the air. 17 years later, you want to know about mycotoxins, and I'll be darned if the science hasn't caught up with us now. They're saying cancer and other diseases are intimately linked with these mycotoxins that fungus makes. I wonder, you know, my producer said, let's do a five minute segment on Mr. Potato Head and see how far that will go. So here's Mr. Potato Head. That's, doesn't that look like Mr. Potato Head with a toboggan on? That toboggan on his head is actually uh, a gland in our body. It's called an adrenal gland. That's a kidney that it's sitting on top of. The adrenal gland is responsible, folks, for that fight or flight. You know, here comes danger. Oh my gosh, am I gonna run or duke it out with somebody? That's that little tiny pale gray gland sitting on top of the kidney, each kidney. So let's talk a little bit about fear and anxiety and stress and so forth. Let's define them first. Unease caused by, this is fear, unease caused by certain danger, right? Anxiety is unease caused uh, or when no certain danger is present. So I'm anxious all the time, I'm nervous, I can't even sleep at night, but there's no danger present, right? Fear is, uh uh-oh, when I go around this corner, somebody's gonna try and hit me on the head with a baseball bat. And then stress is the body's reaction and symptoms in response to danger. That's where that little adrenal gland, the little ski cap on the kidney uh, comes into play. Here's some common fears. Arachnophobia, you know, there's a movie about this, spiders, right? Ophidiophobia, Uh, This is snakes, fear of snakes. I happen to have this one. We'll get to it in a minute. Acrophobia, fear of heights, fear of falling. Agoraphobia, a difficult escape. This is actually deep. You need to, you know, see a counselor when you have this. Uh, Sinophobia is a fear of dogs. And trypanophobia is the fear of injections. And believe me, a lot of people have those. When I was a corpsman in the Navy, we gave all the Marines and all the Navy and all the Air Force and so forth shots. And I must have given, you know, hundreds of thousands of shots. But for me to get a shot, I'm just standing there like a little baby. You know, I don't like needles. And here's one of the reasons why. When you push that into my body, that plunger isn't a withdrawal plunger. You can't then pull it out. Right? If I eat something poisonous, I can swallow some Epicac syrup and vomit and get it out. But once you push that syringe, whatever it is in there, you're going to get. Okay? How fear affects our health. We need to know this. This is a segment not so much about mold as about fear and anxiety and stress that so many millions of people have. Your adrenal glands make the hormone called cortisol. That cortisol is always high in the morning and lowest in the evening. That's the reason you're sitting there on the couch watching TV or out for a walk and you start nodding off. Cortisol's almost nothing, but when cortisol's up, you ever get out of bed and you're just pumped, you feel like going, going, going? It's always higher in the morning. During the fight or flight response, cortisol uh, elevates in our blood. If stress remains constant, like it does for many of us, we lead stressful lives. What's going on right now? You've got people who are upset with the president, 
But several years ago, you had people who were upset with the president. And this is causing a lot of undue stress. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I was in a war. Stress, that is stress. Please drop all this uneasiness that's going on today. Now cortisol becomes detrimental to our health when it's always up, as some of you have. Contributing lower muscle mass, bone density problems, your immune system dips, thyroid function, it can increase your blood pressure and blood sugar levels, among other things. And so I thought this was really interesting, mind over pills. It's over 100 medications for fear and anxiety. Some of you may been, uh, have been on many. But Georgetown University researchers have just discovered that people who suffer from general anxiety disorder, or GAD, control it well following an eight-week course in mindfulness meditation. There's another name for mindfulness meditation, right? It's published in a book called the Bible, Matthew 11. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Folks, the bottom line when you're under a lot of stress is to curb it. We're big boys and girls, right? We've been through a lot in our lives. Try and control your stress because now science knows when you're way, way up there with stress, cortisol circulating through your blood, and you're mean, you don't feel good, and you wanna fight somebody. Calm down, take it easy, and know when your cortisol levels are down, like before you go to bed, everything's fine. Now you know. So how do you study a disease like cancer or diabetes? Folks, you don't wanna go in and give people cancer or diabetes, that's cruel and inhumane. You study it with animals. Hmm, how do you give animals diabetes or cancer? In the case of diabetes, you inject a mycotoxin, a fungal metabolite called streptozotocin. You inoculate them over a few weeks' time, and guess what? They all get diabetes. And so what they end up with is not really diabetes. That's a name we've given to them because their blood sugar takes off and so forth. What they get is a mycotoxicosis induced by fungus. It's really that simple. And yet we're calling it diabetes all day and cancer. It even gets worse. Joining me today is a good buddy of mine from... 100 years ago? Just about. We met when we were born. <laughs> we uh, were Dr. young. <laughs> Dr. John Trowbridge, he's written this book that continues to sell and sell and sell, like a million copies. It's $7.99. It's called The Yeast Syndrome, The Wisdom of This Book and This Man. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Doug. The metabolic syndrome is kind of the new name for diabetes today. It isn't just diabetes or prediabetes. Well, the, they called it prediabetes for a long time and saying we're not quite sure, but actually a friend of mine, Jerry Reven, he was a Stanford professor. I met him way back when he was studying hypo, low glycemia, okay, low okay, sugars. Yeah. <clears throat> and he came up with this concept and presented it in 1988 of Syndrome X, where he couldn't explain these particular findings, but, you know, those people seem to get diabetes. And then they called it pre-diabetes, and they called it metabolic syndrome, cardiometabolic syndrome. We've got fancy names for everything. What it means is, is we can document the biological changes happening inside you on the way to becoming sugar intolerant. Now, <clears throat> you don't just walk along and then fall off a cliff called diabetes, you kind of go down a slope. What could be causing something like that? I have no idea, you that's no why idea. I brought you oh, in today. Oh, thank goodness, because what I'm thinking is that if you have sugars and starches, you know the three main things, sugar, starches, sugar, starches, sugar, starches, <laughs> yes. If you have those, you're feeding yeast. Why would that matter? Because you know, you're, you're not sick, no, but you had those antibiotics a few years ago, then you had those hormones, then you had that stress, then you had, you know, and it goes on Living and on. in a moldy home. Exactly, you know, yeah. all these things are leading up to the point when you keep putting the carbohydrates in, now you're feeding yeast and those toxins are working on you. And I personally think you're really just setting yourself up for a diabetic pattern, which is very easy to reverse in a lot of people. And, and that's, you know, it's funny. You don't go in to work with diabetic patients. They often go to endocrinologists. Absolutely. But people come to you with fluctuating blood sugars, high and low. And by the way, while he's helping them with their pain in their shoulder, their blood sugars start to stabilize. You bring up Syndrome X. And yes. I think that's fascinating because my audience will know about Turkey X. Turkey X happened in England where a million turkeys died in 1963. And they, could, they do autopsies on the birds and look and look like they do on dead people in America. Well, what could have caused that? What could, look at that lump. That must have been cancer. It was what the birds ate. They ate mold-impregnated corn, and a million of them died. What they needed to do was look at their diet. 
look at their corn, take a diet history, a dead bird with all these tumors growing in it, only manifested to kill them. It was their diet that was doing this. So syndrome X is all these various blood sugar problems and so forth. Turkey X is what started this whole thing. A little bit of this book, you Bingo. know, yeast syndrome. So now, with a disease like this, you sit with people who are in tears because their daughter has juvenile diabetes, one thing or another. How do you start when they're that scared? They've been to the endocrinologist, her blood sugar was 380. How do you start? It's real simple. You say, look, what we have to do is take what you got going now, wish it was 10 years earlier, but we have to get you back to feeling pretty normal. And when I'm talking normal, see, I learned how to manage diabetes at the National Institutes of Health in Washington a long time ago, before we ever met. And, and I'm really strict. I want real tight blood sugar control. You can't get that with drugs because it's dangerous. So you get that with nutrition and diet and little teas and drugs, exercise, the whole shooting match, okay? If you get a compliant patient, these people can often get off their, almost always get off their oral drugs and sometimes even get off their insulin. Diabetes is a management problem for your metabolism. All we have to do is help it. The question today coming out of medical offices and out of the streets is, yike, do I have prediabetes? That's what they want you to believe, folks, so you all end up in an endocrinologist's office. In medical offices, the question is, how do I treat this? What do I want you to learn from today's uh, segment with Dr. Trowbridge? To ask this question, what's the cause? And then know the cause. Thank you for coming I endorse today. that. Yeah, Thank you. Very Dave. good to see you. Thank you. We have so many children today who are sick and in hospitals, and CT scans is a technology they can see through your body. Nurse Jenny, are those really safe? Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. It has become almost routine for children with abdominal pain to get a CT scan to check for appendicitis. The first study to directly assess the risk of cancer after a CT scan in children found a clear dose-response relationship with leukemia and brain tumors. No one keeps track of how much radiation we receive over our lifetime from these medical tests, so it's up to us to keep track of that and to ask if the scan is truly necessary and ask if there's an alternative way to scan without using radiation. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. You know, my good buddy Frank Jordan uh, started this company many, many years ago, and he's been an advertiser with us for a long period of time. Beta Glucan is their primary product, although they've got a lot of spin-offs, incredible eye product, immune products, so forth. One of them, one of his products is called caprylic acid, and he built on that caprylic acid. This is a fatty acid derived from coconut, lauric acid, caprylic acid. And years ago, 15, 20 years ago on the radio, Frank and I started talking about Doug's Duo. I'll never forget you saying, I'm going to leave it on for a couple of weeks and see if it sells. <laughs> 15, 20 years ago. Well, what it, is it? What it is sold, it? maybe because it was 50% off and yeah. effective. It does is work. Is it still 50% off? It's and still 50% off. Effective. Yeah, I won't take it off because we've helped so many people. And, of course, we've been talking about fungus for two decades. And, uh, and the immune system. Well, this combines the best of both. And the caprylic plus, well, it used to just be caprylic. Now we've added all of oregano, we've added garlic, we've added all the different elements that are just really good and put it in one bottle and then still have the beta-glucan and 50% off, it just flies out. We, don't, we can't keep it in. Here's one of the reasons, folks, with his beta-glucan. You have that little funnel that I thought was such a good yeah. idea. A lot of the beta-glucan on the market today is too large to hook onto a receptor site that we have specific to beta-glucan on our white blood cells. Yeah, let me show you. The receptor sites are one to two microns. Obviously, this is huge. How small is a micron? The tip of a pin has 2,000 microns. That's how big it is. So and that shows you if you're two to three microns, you're small. You're really tiny. small. But here's the competitors come in. They're 50 to 500, the, the, the very potent uh, competitor. It's good glucan, mm -hmm. but it's nothing like ours because it, it agglomerates. You see all the little deals like yes. grapes? It, cl it clumps. Mm -hmm. Now, there's big words for it, but that's <laughs> what it is. It won't fit in that receptor site, so it has the uh, macrophage has to come out, break it down with chemicals. Some will get in there. It will, a little bit will work, 
But the glucans are one to two microns, the same as the receptor site. So of course they come through and immediately come in. And I, when I say this, I'm talking about a million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it comes through in a gene. Why do you care? Bioavailability. If you have an issue in health, you want it resolved, and you want it resolved quick. Well, bioavailability means the ability to be absorbed into the body, which is enhanced if it's the same size. You want it to react fast. If more of it gets there faster, then the immune cells get potentiated and normalized. They go, think of fire trucks. You don't want one little tanker truck coming up to your house. You've got a two-story blaze. This sends the hook and ladder the whole nine yards, and it gets there fast. The whole key is to recognize what your issue is, know the cause. Mm -hmm. Once you know the cause, react, and that's fast and effective, and then resolve. And that means your immune system gets there, performs the way it should. It will kill the pathogen, re get it out of your body, which is very important, and you get back to normalization. I, I noticed your hourglass there, especially with fungus being such a pathogen, you know, septicemia and bacteriology are different fields, but fungemia, how much time do any of us really have left? We're so vulnerable. Yeah, your timer, I Here's thought. Here's line. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's up. It's up. It's up. <laughs> I kids, don't want to go. The kids' games. We don't have a choice. When our time's up, it's up. We need a quality of life, not just quantity of life. And you can do it, and you can do it today. Make today the first day of your better tomorrow. Frank, why did the duo do so well. So many people take caprylic acid. I mean, you can go to a store and get caprylic acid and do really well on that. But with beta-glucan, the game changes. When you're taking the NSC100 and the caprylic acid, it's almost uh, like you're killing. I've always said this, that God gave you a slingshot. These are the rocks, right, and the glasses to see where the fungus is or where the pathogen is. It's one thing to annihilate it or begin remediating it in the body with caprylic acid. It's a whole other thing to see it and defend yourself against That's it. That's true. And beta glucan's an adjuvant. That means one plus one equals three. It's synergistic. Either one is effective, but when you put them together, you've really got something very, very special. Yeah. It's, I tell you, I take plenty of supplements. When I travel, we were just in L.A. also for three or four days. When I travel in my Dob kit, ta-da, NSC100. By the way, this is yours free if you're a brand new viewer. Frank will pay postage and everything. There's, what, about a dozen, ten or a dozen of the NSC100s. Call the telephone number. Get some of this free because on day 13, 14, 15, <laughs> you're going to want a bottle of this and the caprylic acid. Great to see you, Frank. Thank God you. God bless you. Thanks for all the help you've been. Oh, it's great to be here. Again. Thanks. Let's just say you're on the Kaufman Phase 2 diet and you're hungry for beans. Hummus with turmeric? How does that sound? It is delicious. Watch this. Today on the Kaufman Diet, we're making a dip called hummus with turmeric. This is a Phase 2 part of the Kaufman Diet. The list of ingredients are two 15-ounce cans chickpeas, drained and rinsed, reserve some water from chickpeas, about quarter of a cup, two cloves, garlic, smashed, juice of one lemon, three tablespoons tahini, one teaspoon sea salt, two teaspoons turmeric powder, half teaspoon cumin, eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, add more for a little heat, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, two thirds cup extra virgin olive oil, Put all ingredients except reserved water into a food processor and blend until smooth. Add some of the reserved water from chickpeas to mixture until desired consistency.
Serve in bowl and drizzle with olive oil. And always remember the recipe for the hummus with turmeric dip is on the Know the Cause website. Heart disease is not, as your cardiologist would like you to believe, a deficiency in statin medications. I have seen lifestyle changes prevent and even reverse heart disease. The first place to start is with your diet, and here's what I tell my patients to do. Include protein in every meal, and that includes beef, pork, chicken, as well as eggs and fish. Forget about the egg and cholesterol myth already. Dump the trans fats. Throw away anything with the words partially hydrogenated or vegetable shortening on the label. First on your list should be margarine or any spread that isn't butter. Eat healthy fats. Foods like avocados, olives, and my personal favorite, macadamia nut oil, are heart healthy fats. And please trash the canola oil. Hello, 1983, here's your oil back. Slow carbs are actually better than no carbs. And that means plenty of green vegetables, even some pseudo grains like quinoa, spelt, and teff get my thumbs up in moderation. Get moving. If you don't train your heart, it gets lazy and weak. Exercise increases your lifespan. What are you doing watching me when you could be exercising? Cut the sugar. It's the number one cause of death in the United States. If it were up to me on every product that contains sugar, there would be a warning label like on cigarette boxes that simply states, sugar kills. It is the number one cause of heart disease. Supplementation on top of diet and exercise can help support these efforts even more. My top three for heart, CoQ10, omega-3 fish oil, and vitamin D3. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori for Know the Cause. Wasn't that interesting about fear? Let's go to the products first. Caprylic acid is what Frank was talking about. That's the big boy right here. It's not only caprylic acid, it's all sorts of antimicrobials, natural, right? So talk to your doctor. If you're on pain medicines, maybe talk to him about switching. Beta-glucan, the big boy, the NSC100, the smaller dose this is 10 milligram, three milligram. And then by the way, if you're a brand new viewer, as we talked about, this is coming to you absolutely free. You don't even pay shipping. Uh, thank you, by the way, Dr. John Trowbridge. Those of you know um, John Trowbridge, Dr. Trowbridge in Houston, know that I have a long 35 year relationship with him. Folks, I wrote a book on fungus and diabetes, the fungus link to diabetes. So it's real, everything he was talking about today. Thank you so much, Jenny Herbachik. I had no idea, CT scans. Folks, I hope this show empowers you to think. Be a wise medical consumer. God bless you, I'll see you next time, bye-bye.